Have you ever wondered what's in a good foreground? How can you make your landscape shine when you're photographing storms? Well, hey, today's your day and this is your video. Let's go. Hey everyone, it's Sanner, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to get good foregrounds for your storm videos. This is a user suggestion from social media. I appreciate it every time someone gives us a video suggestion and we run with it. So without further ado, we're going to get to five tips on better storm videos. Tip number one, isolate your foregrounds. You want to keep your compositions simple. This seems easier said than done, but just think about it for a second. Work with me. If you have a barn as a foreground, but there's also a tractor, a tree, a bush, all these things, it's not really a barn as the foreground anymore, is it? So you want to make sure that you keep your composition simple. Don't put too many distracting elements into a shot with a storm, because if you do, what are you actually taking a picture of? It looks like you're taking a picture of everything and that's not a good thing to be doing. So always be thinking through your compositions as you're shooting and isolating your foregrounds, just the foreground element. Try to keep it to one or two things max, anything more than that, and people are going to start assuming this is a picture of that and not the storm. Or vice versa, it's just going to get too busy and you're not gonna know what you're doing. Tip two, again, one idea at a time, one thing at a time. Don't go crazy with this. We already covered it a little bit just now, but to break the rule a little bit, here's a great shot. This is a Main Street scene. You're looking down Main Street at this storm. There's a lot more than just one thing here, but there's one idea at, in play with the road being the leading line toward the storm in the town. So I consider all this, this whole town Main Street scene, one element and that is your one idea. So you can break that one thing or one or two things rule, but make it about an idea and don't introduce so many elements. Tip three, take your time. No, seriously, this is super important. If you aren't taking your time in shooting, you're going to end up really regretting the shots you get. Think, Just take a couple extra seconds, take a breath, like really take in a scene, think it through, move around a little bit. You're going to be happier with the photos you are producing when you do that. I promise you, you will be. Tip four, balance your compositions. Now this is important. Don't have, when you introduce like extra elements other than the storm, you wanna make sure that everything is balanced. Balance is such a big thing in photography, videography. If everything is on one side, there's a huge chunk of your composition that's being ignored and it creates this uneasy feeling amongst the viewer. It's not good. What you want to do is you want to make sure that there is some balance there. There's, you know, a little bit of, it just looks good to the viewer. You don't want to put your foreground element and your storm all on this one side and leave the other side completely blank. Never great. Usually how you fix this and how you create balance with this shot is to simply use your feet, walk around and balance those things out just simply doing that right there. Okay, so tip five, what are some things you should be looking for? Well, I mean, from experience, when you're photographing out on the plains, there's a couple of different elements that I really, you know, they're kind of my go-tos. The first one, obviously windmills, they're everywhere, old, new, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Windmills are a great element to introduce into storm photography. Another thing, tractors, cars, you know, vehicles, old things that are just kind of there. Old buildings are great. Also barns, we talked about that a little bit ago. Old barns or just barns in general can really look good when it comes to storms. Another thing that I personally have always loved uh, to introduce as a foreground element would be like tr uh, roads and fence lines leading into the storm. We'll talk about leading lines in another video, but that's a good thing to introduce. Road signs, I've used road signs before and they can be really good. So there's a lot of different ideas. The big thing is you wanna make sure that if you do use foreground elements, they're isolated and they're, you know, they, they kind of stand out in the scene and they're not part of a bigger batch of clutter. Make sure that you're taking a photo and it has purpose, it has meaning. So, hey, did you like this video? Did you like us sharing photo tips? We haven't really done this much, but I wanna do more. So let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. We'd love to answer them. 
And finally, a bonus tip before we get out of here. Never assume there's a better foreground down the road unless you know there is because you're always going to regret that decision. Hey, like and subscribe to us. We'll see you next time.